So today I thought we'd take a look at this space controlled tractor. It's from the 1960s. It's plastic. It was made in Hong Kong. It's uh, very rare. It's hard to uh, find in any condition, much less being 100% mint with box. And even more fun than that, the instruction sheet. Look at this. Tells you how to uh, put the robot on the tractor when you're putting it together and if the light bulb burned out you can actually pull the robot's head off and change the light bulb. Shows uh, the battery compartment is very strange. You know how most of them flip or move or have a lever. This one the whole thing slides out. I'll show you that in a second. Directions for use and then uh, troubleshooting guides. Talks about um, if the fan, see there's visible pistons that move up in the in the front of the tractor and there's a fan thing. If the fan isn't spinning, basically they tell you to replace the rubber band. <laughs> and if it isn't bumping and going right, they tell you to take the rubber treads off and stretch them a little bit. Because they're just there to uh, help the bump and go. The box is really cool. It's got some nice artwork on it, as you can see. The, uh, let's see if we can find it on here. Yeah, we're down here. If, if it doesn't get swamped out by the light. Made in Hong Kong. Very rare to uh, find these type of plastic toys. And like I say, in any condition, much less being complete. Um, let's see if I can move this camera in a position where... I can see what we're doing and hold the toy. Can be difficult. So, to change the robot's uh, light, well the whole robot of course lifts off. They showed in the instructions there's two pins that make a connection to send power up to the head of the robot. And then basically you can lift the head off to replace the light bulb should that burn out. There's even a a little metal shield type thing in there to make sure that the light only comes out of the top of the robot's head and its eyes. Kind of interesting that they went to that much trouble. The uh, on-off switches here. Then up in here you can sort of see if I get it maybe just right. The fan and it's got a little rubber band. You can see the metal pistons that are gonna go up and down. Here's your bump and go drive. This at least is all metal. As the bump and go dry moves, it uh, is going to move the levers on the robot. And there's also supposed to be a wiper in there that when the bump and go thing moves, that's what would make the light in the robot's head flash. Here's the, the battery cover. Now look at this. The whole thing slides out to get in. And this plastic toy doesn't run on just two D cell batteries, but three. You gotta squeeze one way the heck down in there and you have two up here. And I'm not prepared with uh, three D-cell batteries. I have never powered this up. It's because, uh, well, a few reasons. One, if it didn't work, I'm not gonna crack it open to fix it anyway. It's uh, too nice of a display piece as is to have any sort of damage from trying to crack glued together plastic to get inside, you know what I mean? But uh, it may or may not work. I really don't know. I haven't ever stuck D-cells in it. It was a rather expensive toy. But it's cool having the uh, full instructions and the toy and the mint box. And let's see, I got this one from Ray Roar. Those of you that are old-time toy collectors will know Ray. He's no longer with us. But when he was, he would travel the world and find toys and put out catalogs and sell them. And... He'd only ever seen two of these in all his travels. And this was one of the ones that he had uh, seen, which I purchased from him back in the mid-1990s. 